Good afternoon, y'all. We're here at the uh, Chicken and Egg Festival here in Moulton, Alabama, and I'm here with uh, Richard Young from the Kentucky Headhunters. Appreciate y'all uh, tuning in to us today. I'm going to ask Richard some questions about what's been going on. They're going to go on tonight around, what, 8.30 or 9? Oh, I'm probably 8.30. 8.30. So it's going to be our early show. Love everybody to zip up here. And uh, and when I say zip up here, it's because I'm from the south. So Don't get us beaten. That's right. Yeah. But definitely come down. Uh, these guys uh, are, are they're, they're the best there is. That's all there is to it. Uh, uh, around this area, Richard, we had Shenandoah was the big guys. And y'all just kept knocking them out of the wards. Every well, you know what? Them some wonderful. Kids. They oh, are. Well, they're good guys. It's, uh, the headhunters had so many years of uh, planning. That's right. You know, we had That's 20 right. years as a rock band, mm -hmm. and uh, me, Fred, Anthony, Greg were together since '68, and we had all this great knowledge of uh, background of blues, bluegrass, and rockabilly that we studied. And so when we finally did, of course, the way we started out is we started out in 68 on an old farmhouse with my grandmother gave us a, we live on in south central Kentucky yes. on a 700 acre farm and it's grown up you know if cows eat through the fence there ain't no fence there just <laughs> on so, uh, here's, you know so we uh, we grew up there and my grandmother had this house on the farm and she didn't want to rent it out people's ag fake they want to rent it so right. so she said I know what I'll do I'll give it them boys and I'd play music in there and then I'd say, well, they're still doing something with it. So we moved in there in 68 and started a little band practicing and that sort of thing. And we was called Itchy Brothers 22 years. Itchy Brothers. Yeah. And we played Birmingham. We Itchy played, We played Diamond Jim's Warehouse. We played uh, the Carousel. I'm sure there's a lot of folks. Did y'all play the there. Banks Lounge while you were Yeah, we played Banks. Everybody played all Banks. Down there, but we had we had a bread truck, and we in about about 19 to see 72 probably. We started venturing out. My grandma bought us a old potato chip truck, and we'd come to Birmingham and play Diamond Jim's Warehouse and all those places. And then we'd go over to Atlanta and play Alex Cooley's and C.W. Shaw's yep. and all those places. Yeah. And uh, then we turn around next weekend. We take the tear out and go up to. Uh, you know, like Southern Illinois or Chicago or something. And so we had a great local, original following there as a rock band. And they used to call us the best known unknown band in America. Yeah. And uh, it was funny because we loved coming to Alabama. And the only thing was we used to play the carousel and we had to play from one to four in the morning. Right. Woo, that's rough. Well, we, you know, we got into a discussion about y'all last night. I, I was I was working out of uh, Jasper, Alabama, and the guys, the guys were going. Uh, I said, "Well, I'm going to meet Richard and uh, some of the Kentucky Headhunters tomorrow." And they said, "They got into this big discussion about how, you know, those are the guys that actually took country music and put some rock, you know, put that rock sure. feel to it, you know." And that was the difference, I believe. You just correct me if I'm wrong. You're on the right track. Is yes. is the reason that y'all were so popular to me? To me, as 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 a fan, right. was that the energy was there? You right. had that. You brought that energy to the music and that came from with, with a little bit of that country flair, country feel. But you had the energy where the other country bands didn't really just have. They just they were great bands. They just didn't have the energy that y'all had at the and time. Are all great. And it was and, and it's great fun. Singers. Yeah, but uh, it, it's, we never were a country band. I know that we never were a country band. But and you were able to cross. But you over. know what is. What happened was, uh, with the change of rock music, yes. when you went from roots rock music into, say, the, the mid in the 80s, and the hair metal and, 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 and the, you know, the more... Uh, That's right. Uh, uh, hair bands. Hair bands style. And so a lot of people didn't relate to that as well as they did Led Zeppelin, Rolling Stones, right. Jackson Brown, all those type acts, you know. Yes. And so they drifted, as CMT came in, they drifted to country music because they could relate to Steve Earle. They That's could right. They could relate to uh, Hank Williams Jr. That's that right. That sort of thing. So that was the next step for them. The younger fans are rediscovering y'all, by the way. Yeah. They're rediscovering you. Uh, uh, they did Walk Softly last night. And it just went over like gangbusters still today. In the it's amazing. And 
Uh, before I forget, I want to know how I get to Dumas Walkers. Uh, where's okay. it at? All right, Dumas Walkers, if you were, uh, let's see, this way tell you. Uh, if you were in coming down from Louisville, Kentucky, mm -hmm. we're, we live exactly 85 miles south of Louisville. Okay. On 565 and 85 miles north of Nashville. Right. And you get off, that's where Mammoth Cave National Park is, folks. Y'all go to that, where the big cave is. Right. And you get off there and get on Highway 90 and go to Glasgow, Kentucky. And Greg lives in Glasgow, then you go eight more miles out there farm, that's where Fred and I live. Uh -huh. And that's where the house is and all the shenanigans go on. And so so Dumas Walkers, is it a I, real I, plug? I, no. Go ahead. All right, here we go. All right, so listen carefully. When carefully. you're in Edmonton, Kentucky, you take 163 south and you go to Tompkinsville, Kentucky. Okay. When you get to Tompkinsville, you cross the Tennessee line, go eight miles, and that's where Dumas is. Well, Dumas passed away, but here's the story behind Dumas Walkers. Right. When we were kids, southern Kentucky, in the air area right there, was dry. In other words, you couldn't buy alcohol. Right. And also, fireworks weren't allowed. Well, you know, every kid wanted to get some firecrackers sure. and sparklers on there. So our parents would drive us, it's only about 22 miles down there, and our parents would drive us down there, we'd go down and get some, uh, you know, some big strings of firecrackers and actually, Dumas was kind of an outlaw, so he had a refrigerator that was dry yeah. that had M80s and cherry bombs <laughs> in a little brown box. I remember them yeah. well. An I outlaw. Well. I mean, it, it's eighth a stick of dynamite. That's, That's right. what it is. So uh, we'd go down and get that, and then our parents always took us down. And then my dad, we had a milk house, and, and my dad would send us to the feed mill in Edmonton to get feed ground, corn and hay, you know, for cattle. So we'd run to do that, but while it was being ground, we'd run to Dumas's and get us a case of Strokes beer. I hear you. You remember Strokes well, beer? Sure and that's a Sandy's beer. <laughs> and we'd drive back home, and we'd drive back to the feed mill, and we'd put that beer down there, and we'd load them sacks on top of it. And Daddy'd have us back in the barn across from the music house there at the milk barn, mm -hmm. and have us dump it in this big bin. It's tongue groove wood, you know, where them boys could shovel it and put feed it. And so we dump that, and then we got that, we'd stash that beer and gear around, you know, in the barn. <laughs> and he come Friday afternoon, he's on. That's you know. excellent. excellent. But Dumas was a real guy. He owned a little old one stop, but it had a it had a little old uh, duke box and had the uh, all a bar, little bar, short bar in it. And I mean, you can buy beer there if you reach the counter. That's the truth. And I mean, I'm gonna tell you that because he's gone. But, uh, him and his brothers were actually uh, quite outlaws, so they liked to do anything, but we didn't know that. Well, it was a great up, story, no doubt. It's it a was great a cool story. story. So what, what happened was, we were in the music house one night, and we started fiddling with a little old thing. Originally, it was called Dizzy Whiz, mm -hmm. which was about a little, uh, you know, drive-in where you get ice cream, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And then it words, we started putting the words to it, and it was about, it came out about going to Dumas when we was kids, and then it also came out about a place in Greensburg, Kentucky, called the Greasy Spoon Restaurant. Right. And there used to be a club called Club 68 in Lebanon, Kentucky, before they had the interstates. Right. And that's where Ike Tina got discovered. Okay. And got signed because 68 was be like a major interstate, like 995 or 65 exactly. or whatever now. Okay. And we used to go up there and open for a rock band called Exile. Now, I know y'all might know of them as a country band. They were a rock band they, back then. They were I remember one of well. the finest rock When Jimmy Stokely was living, he, he was like a cross between Todd Rundgren and Mick Jagger. Mm -hmm. He was a superstar. Well, that one hit they had, you know, was actually on the pop charts, you know, rock yeah. hit first, and then they, they yeah. redone yeah. it later as a country. If right. Like even, but even before, you know, there was uh, uh, Exile had uh, Todd Rundgren produced a right. couple albums. Yeah. Like, and they were on a wooden nickel label, and they just like they had a song called Devil's Bite. It's one of the greatest rock songs I've ever heard. And uh, we'd go up there and open for them for $50, and they'd, they'd give us some extra money for food. That's so that's when that's we came that's back through Greensburg, it was had an all night diner called the Greasy Spoon. And a guy named Adolphus Enos opened the bread hat. He's one of these guys that wore the Kern's bread hat and the apron, came right. out professional. Right. 
So we rode in there 10 or 12 of us and say, uh, uh, okay, we're going to get cheeseburgers, we're going to get the slaw burgers, and, and uh, but we'll get some bottles of ski and, and some chili. That's right. And he'd start taking these orders and he just, we won't, but he never would write it down. I said, don't you need to write this down as a bunch? He said, I want, and I know he meant photographic mind, but he said, I've got a photogenic mind. <laughs> so all those, the combination of, of Dumas Walkers and Adolphus Enos is Greasy Spain, or what that song's about. But you couldn't call it the song called the Adolphus Enos. You right, couldn't right. sing it. Exactly. You know? No. That no, was hard to sing. <laughs> we wrote off the time. No. And then, of course, we put the song out. And You know, it's really weird. When we, when, when we were mastering our album, Mercury Records came up to us. They said, guys, we just got one request. We wish y'all would leave that Dumas song off the record. And we were like, uh, that might not be a good idea, and they, uh, we said, why? And they said, because it's about something you know about. And so I said, well, you don't understand, everybody's got that. Every, every town's got that. Every got town, a they got a famous walk. Somewhere that's true. You know, you know? In, in, in Marion County, where we're from, you know, uh, it's dry. Sure. So we had the White House and some of those places like that. You and know? The movie and, I mean, it's, the just, movie it's, it's, just, it's just a common thing. Right. Style, it was know? the way it was back then. It's the way it is right. now. We just don't, we're too old to get bored of well, it. Well, we had some of our fans out here wondering about the Walk Softly song. Uh, was that an original or was it? Because I can't no. remember. Who did Let it first? Let me tell you, actually, a local boy wrote that song right here in Alabama. A uh, good friend of ours, mm -hmm. Jay Clanners, and we're hoping he makes a show tonight. I know he's been not like well, okay. but Jay Clanders and Bill Monroe wrote that show. Bill Monroe, the grass guy. We couldn't remember and who, but Jake lives over here next to Muscle Show. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and if I'm a betting man, he wrote probably the biggest part of it. Bill wrote no the rest of it. No you doubt. Know? But uh, it was the greatest thing when we first came out. And the video hit from Walks Off. And one of the first places we played was over in Muscle Shows at a little bar. Yeah. And you couldn't get within a mile of that place. We could have played the, the arena somewhere. You no know that? No and, uh, but we're very proud, and we always kept in touch with Jake, and hopefully he'll make it tonight. But I, I would say he's probably the brainchild behind that song. Mm -hmm. Well, no doubt. We, yeah, we no. own it. I mean, as far as it's like Bill Monroe said, they took that song away from me. Yeah. Because it. It was, for modern times, we created something that people could relate to. And you made it your own. We made it our own. That's right. And I always said, anytime we, if we ever do a cover, I feel like, even though Lonesome Me, I feel like yeah. Don Gibson, I mean, he was in the studio when we cut the demo for him, and he, you know, we took it somewhere else. If you can't, you can't take the song and make it something besides what the original you should touch. Yeah, that, I agree. You know? I mean, and I think every artist, such as yourself, you know, we play your songs now. You know, sure, we play sure. Dumas Walker, and sure. we and we may put our little flair. We'll put our little flair on it. You know, and absolutely. Try to, try to give it a new feel, it a new interest. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's probably one thing that the, the headhunters probably brought to the music more than anything was the ability to re-embellish songs that have been classics. Because you know, Wesley Rose told me when I was a kid, I was writing Baker for Rose Publishing Company, and he said. And that was real, the publishing company, y'all. Yeah, yeah, they were. They were the big boys. That was it. He said, if a song is real, he always wanted to pipe through the sun. Richard, you know, if a song's a real hit, a real classic, you can do it anyway. And I've learned that you can take any song that's a real classic and you can change it up and make it reggae, blues, sure. rock, country, or anything, and it still works. So I learned a lot from him because. Right when I was writing down there, it was about the time that Opera Land purchased uh, Acre Froze, which was, in my opinion, very sad. And because it was a family owned thing between he and Roy Acuff. Yes. And, a fam and, and, it, and it was like it owned some of the hugest catalog. And, I mean, me as a kid, I, I was overwhelmed with just who I met. I'd be in there. Exactly. Roy Orbison would come in and David Edmonds from Rock Pile looking at the songs. And, just things like that, you know, so, and, and it was my first introduction to Nashville because we were very rock and roll. Yes. And I, we, well, you, somebody could say play a country song, oh, we jumped through yeah. the window, you know, right. I mean, we just weren't uh -huh. into country music. Right. We were English rock was our thing, and that's what we were like. Mm -hmm. And it gave us a 
we were spoon fed into the country. We didn't, you know, to just take us and throw us in, we would have been like a snowball and fire. Yeah. But we were able to go in and uh, and actually by people being around people like Wesley and those guys and Roy Acuff, I never will forget one time the first time he saw me because I had hair down the ear then. <laughs> I was walking down the hall. I never will forget he had them on those slick tour jackets they used to wear. In the I remember like the, the, the satins. Yeah, like Oak Ridge Boys jackets. I always call them. That's right. Oak Ridge Boys jackets. Boy. Yeah, <laughs> but, but you know, he, he's, he's walking down the hall like this. And you know, I, I had a, even though I wasn't into country music, I had a huge respect for Roy Acuff. Right. Because Sure. Growing up, my my family had a country store from 1922 to 1958, and my grandmother had a poster in there of where Roy Acuff and the something county boys, I can't think right now, or I can imagine where he was from, right. from like the 20s or 30s or something, and I still have that in the music house now, but he's walking down through there, you know, and he stops me and said, hey, what's your name? And I said, well, I'm Richard Young, sir. Pleasure to meet you. And he said, well, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm trying to write songs. Well, go get a haircut first. <laughs> I'll never forget that as long as I live, man. Well, I got and, a question, Richard. Yeah. And he never did let us on the ground. I don't know what's the ground. He never line. did? No. Oh. No. But we have the distinction of never playing so <laughs> anyway. One of the biggest bands of country music at the yeah. time, and you never got a chance to no. play. So that well, is. Bill, that is a Bill biggest. tried to get a song, but it was. Uh, uh, Roy just wouldn't have any part of it. Uh, infamous honor, you know, basically, I guess, is it? Yeah, and yeah. it's like, but it's, it's such a great story of why we didn't get on. Yeah, exactly. Then, then yeah. it's almost to go on now with Peter it all out, so That's why right. would we do it? Exactly. Know? Well, I got a question I, I know the fans want to know. Tell us, Kentucky Headhunters 2012, what's going on? Well, I know you got a new album out. We're lucky boys. We live the charm life. Mm -hmm. we, we get live. Part of the time we're on the road doing just what we're doing today with you guys, meeting new people, playing new places, and then we'll be tomorrow. We'll be feeding cows on the farm. That's right. And I think it keeps us really. We, I think that's one reason we've lasted so long is we have a real even keel balance about our lives. Yeah, we're still grounded. We've all been married to the same women for 30 years, um, which I don't see how they put up with us, but it's amazing. That is awesome. And uh, it takes a very special one to be married to a headhunter. Sure. Or any musician, but especially us, because my wife always says they married Spanky in our game. <laughs> you know, we never we never got past fifteen or sixteen. Exactly. Years. Still and a little we still living kids. We're very right. responsible uh, husbands and, and fathers, but but when we get a while get that taken care of, we're back to being doofus, right. you know. So back on stage. Back on stage and out the music house and That's right. I get up every morning in my life and I'm home and get me a cup of coffee and I'm down there at the practice house with my office and we had a great thing happen to us in our career too. Uh, it affects us indirectly. Is uh, my son has the big rock band Blackstone Cherry. Right. And uh, they are really coming along. Yeah. Hot. Well, in, in America, we're hoping big things for them. They're huge in Europe. Right. They just sold out. Uh, from Paris to London, they sold out 28 shows from Germany, all these places, Vienna, Austria, uh, 28 straight shows, and we're very proud of them. And they're, they've gotten over the barrier where they're playing arenas over there now. Well, are, are, I saw their name. Are they on the Memphis and Mayville? Yes, they are. Right? They yes, they are. And, and they're on some other festivals, too. Yeah, so y'all be on the lookout for that. Yeah, I mean, they're actually, uh, tonight, they, they went out for a little three-day run like us, and. Uh, they're in Evansville, Indiana tonight, and then we'll all be home tomorrow and we'll go turkey hunting. My cousin's coming up from Florida, he's a big turkey hunter, and he's going to spend two or three days with us. And if we can keep away from turkey mites, y'all got turkey mites here? <laughs> Brother, uh, I, I see them on the side of the road. They're all over the place here. No, it's the mites. you got to watch out for turkey well, mites. I'm, I'm staying away Y'all be turkey. careful. Turkey mites. Uh, I, I can't really say what. I can't really say it like he said it, so it takes some of it. Well, why not? I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> About, oh, last fall, Fred been out. See, we all turkey hunt. The turkey might is a... Well, Fred, to, the, to them, will be the drummer. That's right? my brother. He's, yeah, he's the drummer. Mm -hmm. And Greg, the guitar player, he plays the slides so good. That's our cousin. 
Right. And then Doug is just our friend. We found him on the side of the road 30 years ago. So. <laughs> but we've been together all of our life and we love each other. But uh, a turkey mite is a larva of a deer tick. Okay. And what happens is these turkeys walk around in the weeds and they get them on them and then they get in these trails and then when people walk, they get they get at them and they'll bite you. Right. So anyway, we're dealing with that right now. And I'm, so I'm kind of wondering how we're going to go get rid of them for tomorrow. But uh, I've lost my train thought we was talking about turkey. <laughs> but I got old turkey mice. You were talking about how bad turkey, you were going to say a saying that your friend had. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you funny, I'm going to tell you a funny story. So last fall, Billy Joe Schaefer was in town, and he was uh, the sheriff of Barron County. He's his best friend, and he's up visiting, and they came out to the farm, and he wanted to see the music house. Right. So it was a full moon that night. You know Billy Joe, he's cut raw, he's mm -hmm. raw by old cowboy. Right. And he walks out of the car, and we greet each other there, and, and, the, and it's just a little country blacktop road, then we got a little gravel parking lot, and then you go up the steps to the house. Right? Yeah. Then he gets out of the car, and he said, oh, I got to go to the bathroom bath. <laughs> so he turns around, he walks across the road in the weeds there, and I said, Billy Joe, and, and you know, it's a silhouette of him. <laughs> you see this full moon, this big tall, giant of a man, this cowboy hat, and he's standing there relieving himself. <laughs> I said, Billy Joe, be careful. We're having a lot of trouble with turkey mice. He said, oh, hell, it's always something. <laughs> 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 you just had to be there to witness that big giant silhouette in the moonlight. In the moonlight. It's always like Roy Rogers. Oh, hell, it's You know, Billy's always in you know. Well, tell us about the new album. Well, I'll tell you what we did. This is, this is our 12th album, and we've always written all of our music. This Blackstone Cherry does right. too, off of their albums. We write it all there, then we go to the big studio and we record it, and then mix it and master it, of course. Right. And this time, it had been eight years since we made a real studio album where you go, write those songs and record them like that. Right. So we just couldn't, for some reason, no, we just could, we wanted to make an album. We just couldn't get it in our heart to go to the big studio and go through all that. And we just said, hey, this problem, let's go into the practice house we call it this time. And we went in from October, see, September, October, November, while we had free time, we wrote. Then we took off Thanksgiving and, and deer season and Christmas. Can't miss deer season. Right. And two days after Christmas, we went in that practice house with all this big rig and roll equipment, and we recorded 17 new songs. God. And we had the greatest time, but we like froze to death. <laughs> it started snowing on the 27th of December, the day we started. And uh, it was, all we all, we got so cold up there. I mean, it, we was wearing our coats playing. Because all we had, see, ain't no insulation in the house. No wonder, Penny. There's no heat, no running water, it's just a house of electricity. We play music. Play music. And we have to gear it for spring to the fall. Right. But we sat right in there on the edge of January to do this. God. Because we were on a time frame. We didn't right, sure. up. But uh, it was very cold, but we had so much fun that we didn't pay any attention to it. You know, being yeah. cold. And there were moments that came out on this record that I don't think the headhunters, if we played and made 50 albums, I don't think we'd ever over hearts up enough to say some of the things we said on this so, record. So the fans are going to get something unique, something Absolutely. special, different. It's, it, it's, it's a one of a kind record, but, but it won't be long because I, we've discussed it and we want to make another album soon, but we don't want to do it in a big studio, we won't go back there right. because we found ourselves. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it, I think at times bands is going through times that sort of thing. They miss, there are certain times when we kind of, not get off track really, but we kind of get blindsided by what society is doing. You, right. you know, you have to make albums through what the politics of exactly. the world, sure. through, through the way people's hearts are feeling and all that. And I think that it kind of pulled us back into the stream, so right. to speak. Well, how can they get it? How can they pick it up? Well, believe it or not, we were able to convince Walmart normally does not carry independent records, but Walmart's got it. FYE, Best Buy, any major record labels. 
or stores in it. Right. You know what? If they don't have it, call them. We'll come and visit. Them. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now, just get that store <laughs> number at Walmart. If they don't have right. it, you call me, and we'll call the label, and they'll get it. All right. Well, Richard. But everybody's been really cool about this record. Yeah. It's doing awful Good. well, and the yeah. press has been phenomenal. And you're going to play some of, them, of the songs tonight. Probably five tonight. Good. All right. Y'all yeah. need to get down here. Get down here. To Everybody Baltimore. come on down yeah, quick because I don't know if they ain't much standing room. Everybody's a, if everybody wants to sit down, if it's very big, we wouldn't have no room. It's, it's packing out. I mean, this place is be beautiful out here. I mean, there is, I oh, mean, this place right. is packing out. So, Carl DeMone from 49 County News. And uh, we appreciate Richard Young. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Sir. Thank and uh, we've got some more in. interviews coming up. Y'all just uh, stick around. And uh, we're going to hang out and uh, watch the show here in a little while. I hope to see y'all down here. So we're going to take a little break. And we may have, if we can, we're going to try to get Black Oak, Arkansas, yeah. one of the, the greatest uh, classic rock bands oh. uh, ever was. So. And there's plenty of good food down here because I can smell it. And I smell it out there. I just haven't found it yet. It ain't like we ain't going to eat. I'm going to have to eat something. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to have to eat something. So y'all come on down. Chicken. Yeah. Eat with us. Everyone. Polish sausages. What? That's what it's all about. Come on. <laughs> <laughs>